This is where it gets interesting. They're seven and four this season against the Bucks, the Celtics, the 76ers. Bob, what is it about these matchups with the Pacers that expose weaknesses for the Milwaukee Bucks? Defense, Malika. I mean, the, 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 the Bucks are second in the league in offense. The Pacers are the first in offense. Pacers are 26th in defense. The Bucks are 19th. This is the problem with the Bucks. You, you never want to go into a game saying we got to outscore the opponent. And that's what you got a little bit when you when you trade Holiday for Lillard. That was the deal. That was the understanding. I thought the Bucks defense would be better than 19th. When they go up against a high octane offense, as we've seen with the Pacers, they've struggled. The Bucks are not a contender. When you're 19th in defense, go back and look at the, I got the historian right here. <laughs> the history does, of, you, you don't win work. championships with 19th ranked defense in the NBA. So, so the Bucks have a defensive problem that they have to fix. They definitely have to fix it. There's no doubt about that, but I'm going to say this too. We've got to point to them offensively in this regard. Damian Lillard is averaging 25 a game, but he's only shooting 43% from the field. He's only shooting 35% from three-point range. And when you look at it from that perspective, and you're the number two option on a squad that has Giannis Antetokounmpo averaging 31 and 11, and obviously he's going to be a high percentage shooter because he's usually dunking on somebody, okay? The reality is, is that if you miss those amount of shots, that's not going to facilitate better defense. And so we got to pay attention to that. Um, and I'm, what I'm saying is Damian Lillard, the more prolific he is offensively, the more efficient he is offensively, I think in a roundabout way that will help them a little bit more, at a little bit more defensively. Go back to Toronto for uh, – not Toronto. Toronto we're going to set aside for probably about three years. But That's let's go back years. to – maybe not three. Let's go back to the Pacers for a second. I don't think any of us is going to sit here and say they're a threat to the very top, which means Boston. In a series, considering they've owned Milwaukee already this year, would Milwaukee be favored in such a series? Sure. But is but is the are the Pacers a threat against Milwaukee for the reasons that we're talking about defensively? Yes, I'm not putting in ink anything to do with the Sixers as well as Joel Embiid is playing. Not ink, not yet. And then we start talking about the Knicks and the Cavaliers, who could be in a rematch for all we know of last year's first round series. Mm -hmm. The Pacers at least have inserted themselves. And, and look, Rick Carlisle is a coach with some savvy. And he understands what he's doing. Oh, wait, he's wearing a championship ring from a few years ago. Rick Carlisle knows how to deploy them. They have to get better. Lord knows they cannot be this bad defensively and be a threat to anybody. They're going to get a little better defensively. I like this move by the Pacers. Yes, more for next year and beyond. But for right now, it, it, it pushes the others a little bit to at least pay attention to Indiana. Well, and to your point about free agents not necessarily looking at Indiana, this is when you're talking about trades, when you're talking about building this team, Bob, this is how Indiana is going to do it. Yeah, look, it, it, my dad grew up in India. I, I like Indiana, okay, so, so I say this softly. Players aren't raising their hand and saying, I, get me to Indiana. They're not calling their agent saying, get me to Indiana. When they made this trade, and you know this, Woj, and everybody knows this, Indiana was committing to a max contract. You don't give up three first-round picks and say, well, Pascal, in the summer, we'll try to get you a $20 million. He's getting a max contract from Indiana. Some would say that's an overpay. Doesn't matter. They did what they had to do. They got a player. They got a wing at a high position. And you're right about Rick Carlisle. I mean, you don't want to go up against Rick Carlisle in a playoff series. You do not want to do that. He's proven that he can outcoach some of the best coaches in the league, and he's a tough matchup, and he's going to – He's going to be a tough out, and this, they just got a lot better. So you're right. I mean, it's, it's not something to be trifled with, this Indiana team. But you are going to see players go to smaller markets if they want max contracts. Yeah. Because the big markets cannot just run their, their luxury tax through the roof. So if yeah. you want a max deal, it's in Indiana. It's going to be in Charlotte. Uh, it's going to be in Cleveland. That's how the league is going to Be careful, Mr. Big Market cap. over there in New York, Miami, L.A. He didn't even want to hear that. Well, first of all, not trying Miami, to hear that. Miami is not the largest huh? market in the world, but it is special. Big market. The bottom line is this. I am in, first of all, that's what, the, that's what the league wants. They want these smaller market teams get, get, getting some of this marquee talent. So applaud that. Outside of that, I'm done thinking about the big markets, man, because obviously it doesn't get much bigger in New York, and where the hell has that gotten us? Well, we so let's just move on.